Okay, today's topic is about sequential circuit analysis. The goal here is to determine the state transition diagram given a sequential circuit. Now recall that in a state machine problem, we've typically started with a word problem from which we derive a state transition diagram. From that state transition diagram, we create a next state table or also known as the state table. Then given a choice of flip-flop, example JK flip-flop, for instance, if we know that we're using JK flip-flops, we can expand this next state table, expand this next state table and come up with the next state logic using for the J's and the K's. And from these tab from these values of J's and K's that we come up with, we can come up with a next state circuit and an output logic. The problem at hand is sequential circuit analysis. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a circuit. And from here, our goal is to eventually come up with a state transition diagram. All right, so let's get started. In this particular problem, we have our circuit. We have a JK flip-flop. We have inputs to the JK. The input to the system is called X. All right, this is our input. We have our output Z. We have J1, K1, J2, and K2. So let's come up with the expression for J1. J1 is equal to the input X. K1 is equal to X ended with not B. Similarly, we can come up with the expression for J2 which is also x and k2 which is an exclusive order of x and not a so we have not a and finally for the output z it's exclusive order of a and b now that we've come up with the expression next thing that we want to do is using these equations fill out the next state table so here's a generic next state table. We have our current states right here. So we have our current states, current states A, B. We have our next state. We don't know what these next states are. Uh, we know the Boolean expression for the J ones and the K ones. So what we're going to do next is basically fill these out. So let's start with the output Z. So Z is A exclusive or B. We have A and B. So zero exclusive or zero and zero should give us zero. Zero one should give us one. 1, 0 should be 1, and 1, 1 should be a 0. So that's our Boolean expression for the output Z. Okay. Next, let's focus on Z1. Z1 is equal to X. So if X is equal to 0, for this case, J1 is going to be 0 for all values of the current state, regardless of what A is and what B is. Let's look at K1. K1 is X ended with not b. Now if x is equal to 0, k1 is equal to always 0 as well. For j2, when x is equal to 0, just like j1 and k1, this is also equal to 0. So j2 is always going to be 0. Now we're again looking at x equals 0. So k2 is 0 exclusive or with not a 0 exclusive or with not a and if you go and look at the truth table for if you go and look at the look at the truth table for a exclusive or what you'll see is when one of the input is 0 the output is this opposite of this particular input so our or when let me say that again when the x is equal to 0 and you do an exclusive or you are left with that second input. So in this case, we have 0 exclusive or with not A. So that basically just yields not A because X is equal to 0. Right? So X is equal to 0. So this is not A. And not A, 0 gives you 1. 0 gives you 1. 1 gives you 0. 1 gives you 0. Alright, let's move on to the cases where x is equal to 1 and we'll go focus back on j1. So this is simply 1. 
j1 is always going to be 1. How about k1? x is 1, so k1 is simply going to be not b. So not b. So b is 0. So k1 is going to be 1. b is 1. k1 is going to be 0. b is 0. k1 is going to be 1. b is 1. k1 is going to be 0. J2 is also x, so since x is equal to 1, we're looking at simply 1. K2 is 1 exclusive or with not a. And whenever you exclusive or 1 or something, you get the opposite of that item. So in this case, we have not a, so we get the opposite of that, so that should be equal to a. So k2 is a whenever x is equal to 1. Okay, whenever x is equal to 1, k2 is equal to whatever the value of a is. So a is 0, so k2 should be 0. a is 0, k2 should be a 0. a is 1, k2 should be a 1. a is 1, and k2 should also be a 1. So our next state logic table for jk flip-flops Right, the next state logic is complete based on. So we've looked at this portion of the circuit and we filled out these guys. We looked at this output logic and we filled out this. Okay. So our next step is using these values of J's and K's, we need to fill out what the next right using what the values are at these side of the flip flop. We want to figure out what the values of A next is. And using the values of J2 and K2 on this side, we want to figure out what the value is of B. Okay? So let's take a look at the case where X is equal to 0. So we're looking at X is equal to 0. So we're going to look at X is equal to 0. J1 and K1 are going to give us the value of A next right here. So let's take a look at here. J1 is 0, K1 is 0. In all cases, J1 and K1 is all 0. JK flow flow, the truth table says, if J is 0, in k is 0, the next value of at the output is equal to the previous value. So the previous value is 0. So in this case, this is going to be 0. 0, 0, previous value is 0. So this is going to be 0. 0, 0, previous value is 1. So this is going to be 1. Uh, 0, 0, 1. Right. So 0, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so using the jk values. Let's take a look again at x equals to 0, but let's focus on the j and j2 and k2 to come up with what the value of b next should be. 0, 1 from jk truth table. 0, 1 leads us to a next state or next value of 0. 0, 1 gives us 0. 0, 0 gives us the previous value. So in this case, we're looking at b. So b is 0, so it should be a 0. 0, 0 b is 1, so it should be a 1. Okay, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now we have the a next and the b next to fill out for x is equal to 1. So we're looking at x equals 1, j1 and k1 are going to give us the value of a next. When j and k is 1, 1, a next is going to be opposite of the a. So, alright, so a next is going to be opposite of a, so that's supposed to be a 1. 1, 0, leads me to a 1. Uh, 1, 1, opposite of a, so that's 0. 1, 0 sets the value of a to a 1. So we have 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. And finally, let's take a look at j2 and k2 for x equals 1 and decide what b next should be. 1, 0 at jk sets. 1, 0 sets. And the last two rows are for j and k both equal 1, 1. In this case, the output is going to be opposite of b. So if b is 0, it's going to be a 1. If b is 1, it's going to be a 0. So 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay. Now, if you look at this state table, we have a complete, we have current state. For input x equals 0, we have the next states. Input x equals 1, we have the next states. And we have the output. So since the output depends only on the current state, Right? This is a this is going to be a Moore state diagram. Okay, so based on this table, let's draw the state transition diagram. So here's our next state table, and here was our circuit. If I'm currently in zero zero, and x is equal to zero, 
I go back to 0, 0. And if x is equal to 1, I go to state 1, 1. So 0, 0 leads me back to 0, 0 with the input of 0. Input of 1 leads me to 1, 1. Now, let's take a look at what happens if I'm in 1, 1. If I'm in 1, 1, x is equal to 0 leads me back to 1, 1. 1 leads me to 1, 0. If I'm in if I'm in if I'm in one zero, so if, let's take a look at this. If I'm currently in one zero, right, if I'm currently in one zero, zero leads me back to one zero. One leads me to zero one. So one leads me back. One takes me to zero one. And then finally, let's take a look at what happens if I'm here. So zero one with the input of zero. I go to 0, 0. Input of 1 takes me to 1, 1. Okay. So we figured out from this circuit, we came up with the next state table. And using that next state table, we were able to come up with the next state diagram. So this is how we, uh, we do the sequence of circuit analysis and come up with the state transition diagram.